Lesson 2.7, Multiply Using Partial Products. It's very important you saw the three previous videos, 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6, which are linked in the description because they led up to this lesson. We can use place value and partial products to multiply by a one-digit factor. We break apart the greater factor into thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. Next, we can multiply each of these place values by the one-digit factor. Number three, the last thing we do is we add the partial products to get the full product. And if you remember from video 2.6, we did this. When we use mental math to multiply by place value in partial products, we begin on the left of the model, here, for the greatest place value. For 2 times 376, we start with 2 times 300, which is 600. That's where we begin. We do 2 times 70, which is 140, and 2 times 6, which is 12. We add these partial products and get 752. So we're starting with the greatest place value for mental math. When we multiply factors in vertical form, like this, using place value and partial products, we also begin on the left at the greatest place value. We do 2 times 300, which is equal to 600. Then we do 2 times 70, which is 140. Then we do 2 times 6, which is 12. We add these partial products to get 752. Now, we'll begin with the ones place in lesson 2.10 for multiplying with regrouping. This is a completely different lesson, and we're showing you how you can use place value and partial products to do mental math. We can use what we know about the distributive property to break apart the greater factors to find products of three-digit and one-digit factors. We use place value and partial products. And we learned that in video 2.5. Here we have 4 times 143. We break the 143 into a 100 plus a 40 plus a 3. We start with the greatest place value. 4 times 100 is 400. See? 4 times 100 is 400. Then we do the 4 times 40, which is 160. See? Then we do the 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. Then we add our partial products and get 500. 72. And we can check our answer with estimation. 143 is between 100 and 200. That would be our low and high estimates. 4 times 100 is equal to 400, and 4 times 200 is equal to 800. And 572 is between 400 and 800, so 572 is a reasonable answer. We did that in Lesson 2.4. When we multiply using place values and partial products, we can use mental math. We have 5 times 231. And we begin the mental math with the greatest place value, the 200. 5 times 200 is equal to 1,000. Then we do 5 times 30, which is equal to 150. And we think 1,000 plus 150 is 1,150. So do you see how we multiplied to this place value, then this place value, and then we did our addition? So we have a total so far of where we're at. We're at 1,150. Now we do the 5 times 1, which is equal to 5. So 1,150 plus 5 is equal to 1,155. We're using our brain power. We can multiply a four-digit number by a one-digit number using place value and partial products. We have 3,461 times 2. We start with 2 times the greatest place value, the thousands. We have 2 times 3,000, which is 6,000. We have 4 times 400, which is 800. 2 times 6 tens, which is 60. That's 2 times 60 is 120. Then we have 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. We total up all of our partial products, we add them, and get 6,920.
22. If we're at a store and we want to buy eight items that cost $47, we can figure out if we have enough money. We can think $47 times eight. We start multiplying eight times 40, which is 320, and eight times seven, which is 56. We add them up in our head and get $376. And we can estimate to check. A low estimate would be $40, and a high estimate would be $50. 47 is in between, 40 and $50. And $40 times 8 is equal to 320, and $50 times 8 is equal to 400, and our 376 is between 320 and 400. So our answer is reasonable. Dave needs four new tires for his car. He can choose to buy a set of Tire A or Tire B. Tire A tires are $109 each. Tire B tires are supposed to be a little bit better, and they cost $133 each. So how much more will it cost Dave to buy a set of the Tire B tires? Well, we can multiply each price times 4, then subtract to find the difference. We do $133 times 4. We have 4 times $100, that's 400. 4 times 30 is 120, and 4 times 3 is 12. And we total these all up, and we see that tire B would be $532. Now we do tire A. We do $109 times 4. 4 times 100 is 400. 4 times 9 is 36. That would be $436. We do our subtraction, 532 minus 436, and find that tire B would be $96 more for the set of four tires. Now, another way we can solve this is we can subtract first, then multiply by four. So we would subtract first to find the difference. We would do 133 minus the 109 to find the difference in price between the two tires, and we find that it's $24. Now we multiply the $24 times 4, and that would give us 4 times 20, which is 80, and 4 times 4, which is 16, and that would be $96 more. We got the same price by solving it a different way. Now, this way is easier for mental math because we don't need to remember this minuend as we multiply this next amount. This way, we did the multiplication, and if we're trying to do this mental math, we have to remember the 532 as we're multiplying 109 times 4. And then we'd have to remember the minuend and subtrahend to do the subtraction. This way, by finding the difference, finding out it's 24, and then multiplying that by 4, is a lot easier to do mentally. Here we have a multi-step word problem. So we have two jars. We have Emma's jar and Tala's jar. And they have pennies in their jar. Emma and Tala have been saving pennies in jars. And each jar can hold 4,000 pennies. Emma has saved 721 pennies in her jar, and Tala has saved four times that many. How many fewer pennies can Tala add to her jar than Emma until it's full? Now we need to understand what they're asking of us. It says, how many fewer pennies can Tala add to her jar than Emma? So we need to compare Tala and Emma's amounts. But we can't do it until we know how many Tala has. All we know is that she has four times Emma's amount of 721. So we first find the number of Tala's pennies. We do 721 times 4. We do 4 times 700 is 2,800. 4 times 20 is 80, and 4 times 1 is 4. Now we know that Tala has 2,884 pennies. Next, because we need to know until it's full, we need to find the difference between a full jar and Tala's pennies. So it said it can hold 4,000 pennies, and she's got 2,884. We do 4,000 minus 2,884, 
and we find that Tala has 1,116 that she can put in there until her jar is full. Now we find the difference of a full jar in Emma's pennies. We know it can hold 4,000. She only has 721. We do the subtraction and get 3,279 until Emma's jar is full. It wants to know how many fewer pennies Tala has to add to her jar than Emma until they're full. So now we're going to compare Tala's until it's full and Emma's until it's full and find the difference. We do Emma's 3,279 until full and we subtract Tala's 1,116 until full and we get 2,163 fewer pennies that Tala has to put into her jar than Emma until it's full. So we had to do multiplication because we all we knew was that Tala had four times more than her. So we had to start with multiplication. Then we had to do subtraction to find how many until her jar was full. Then we had to do subtraction to find how many until Emma's jar was full. Then we had to find the difference between the two jars until they were full to find out how many fewer Tala needed to add to her jar. Sometimes when we're trying to solve a word problem, the best thing we can do as a strategy is guess and check. We're going to do that in this one. And the sum of a three-digit number and a one-digit number is 118. That's their sum. The product of the numbers is 345. So if we add them, we're going to get 118. If we multiply them, we're going to get 345. If one number is between 100 and 200, what are the numbers? So we think we can use the strategy guess and check. And the three-digit number must be the number between 100 and 200. We've got a three-digit number and a one-digit number. So the one number that's between 100 and 200 has to be the three-digit number. That's not one digit, is it? So we know our three-digit number is between 100 and 200. We also know that the product starts with a 300. If we do 100 times 3, that equals 300. So the one-digit number must be a 3. It must be 3 times 100-something. We can try 110 times 3, and we're going to get 330. And that's too small, but it's close, but it's too small. And when we try adding them to get a sum, we only get 113. We can try 120 times 3, we'll get 360, and that's too large to be 345. And when we try adding them, we get 123, which is too large. So we could do a little bit more than this one since it was close and do 112 times 3, we get 336, which is still too small. And when we add them, we only get 115, not 118. We can go a little bit smaller than this one and try 116 times 3 and we'll get 348 which is too large. It's close to 345 but it's still too large and when we add them we get 119. So now knowing that it's between 112 and 116 we can try 115, multiply it by 3, we get 345. So yes that fits and when we add 115 plus 3 as a sum, we get 118, and that fits. So we know the numbers are 115 and 3. And we had to do guess and check to find it. Now when we were doing this problem and figuring out how much money Dave would need for four new tires for his car, we found that we could multiply get a product, multiply, get a product, and then do subtraction. We also found that it was easier for mental math to just do the subtraction first, find a difference, and then multiply that by four. And doing it this way worked because he was getting four of these tires, and we were comparing these two, and then doing our multiplication. Sometimes we'll have word problems with multiplication and subtraction that we can't subtract first. 
Like for this problem, Lisa bought five cases of soda pop for a party. Each case has 24 cans. After the party, there were nine cans left. How many cans of soda pop did people drink? So in this case, we cannot start with subtraction. We need to find how many cans there were in all first before subtracting. We do 24 times the five cases, and we find that there were 120 cans in all. Now we need to subtract the remaining cans to find how many people drank. We do 120 minus 9 is 111 cans. Our equation was 5 times 24. We solved within the parentheses, and then we subtracted 9 to find how many cans people drank during the party. So when we multiply using mental math, it's different than multiplying by regrouping. For mental math, we begin by multiplying the greatest place value. In video 2.10, we're going to learn to multiply by using regrouping, and we'll begin by multiplying the lowest place value. So these are two different strategies, two different methods, okay? In our next lesson, 2.8, we're going to do more mental math multiplication, and we're going to see how the commutative and associative properties can help us with that. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.